Hello everyone. I am stranded in the middle of somewhere. And when I say stranded, I just so happen to be stranded conveniently two minutes away from where the car lives. But anyway, today we are going to be doing an oil service and a fan belt change for this car, which is very common nowadays here. And then along with that, we are going to be talking about Nissan and then specifically about this car. Why people have a lot of stories to give about Nissan. Everyone in Kenya and their clansmen always have an opinion about Nissan being a trashy car, which I don't agree, but we're going to talk about this specific car and find out why everyone seems to have an opinion about Nissan. So straight away, we're going to do an oil change. We're going to drain the oil filters and then we'll proceed from there. To allow me to do all that I said I'd do, I needed to have the car raised a bit. For that, I completely ignored chapter 1 to chapter 4 of the child labor laws of Kenya and had that sorted after a short while. So the car comes with a 1200cc or 1 1.2 litre engine. Just small three cylinder engine. It's very chalky at low RPM. I know it's a bit funny to say that a 1200cc 12, a cylinder engine is chalky, but it's nice. It has a supercharger. So this is where you feel the oil. We're going to train the oil down there. So an oil drain and then the air filter, which is over here. And then the oil filter is below there. Brand new air filter venting alongside fresh oil. The recommended oil to use for this engine is 5W30, but I used mineral oil this time as I plan to flush the engine soon in order to clean the inside bits. The fuel capacity is 3.2 liters. Before I put back this plastic air intake thing over here, I'm going to leave a bit of space because that's where we need that space to access the fan belt down there the engine is quite hot so probably give it a few minutes to cool down sneaking the belt out was quite tricky because of the tightly put together components in the engine bay but i managed to get it out so the belt was very noisy especially in the mornings and i've taken the old belt out and i found something very interesting this belt has shards of is this metal or glass everywhere? So I can't tell or I'm going to figure out whether there's a pulley that's probably damaged and uh, some segments are breaking off. Then, you know, the subsequent shards are sticking to the belt or it could even be, could even be like the belt was manufactured this way with this shiny, whatever these are, or foreign debris found its way into the belt and pulley system somewhere someday. So it's very interesting. I've never seen this. Unless there's a damaged pulley, whether it's, you know, whatever pulley it is, then this is a very interesting finding. The new belt was similar in sprinkleness, therefore no longer interesting an observation. Probably friction encouraging material. After the wax, I thought to get into the most common idiosyncrasies of the E12 note. So here's what to expect. The engine mounts in this car, it has uh, three engine mounts. One on the right side, one just below the battery, holds the transmission in place, and then one small one underneath both the engine and the gearbox. The issue with uh, not only this one, but majority of three-cylinder engines, they are very unbalanced. So if you have a three-cylinder engine at home, whether it's a Nissan or a Paso or a Whatever animal you're driving that has a three-cylinder engine, you should expect to change engine mounts more frequently than, uh, you know, than people who drive cars with, uh, you know, engines with more cylinders. Why? 
Because three cylinder engines are very unbalanced, the forces inside the engine alternately fluctuate between front and back of the engine as the three pistons move up and down. That, coupled with dead phases totaling to 60 degrees of crankshaft rotation, means that the engine will be vibrating more than an electronic device ladies use to, to make smoothies. I meant a blender, and that is your cue to seek God Father. Point number two. So the spark plugs, spark plugs, Nissan and spark plugs. The spark plugs in modern, when I say modern, I'm saying probably 20, 2009, all the way 2009 now coming forwards so or coming this way. With Nissan, you'll not escape buying good quality plugs. The plugs will, uh, you'll probably need to check out for Nissan Genuine and uh, you can also buy Denso. Denso is the OEM. Denso is the OEM manufacturer for plugs. So if you find a, if you find good Denso anywhere, you can uh, you can install them. Otherwise, if uh, there are very many cases of people who install or who change the plugs in this car, and the, the new plugs rarely go 5K without uh, you know dying or giving birth to serious misfires. So what happens is that there's an influx, or usually there are usually influxes of fake plugs whatever you can say nairobi or whatever so if you're not keen and get you know you just get plugs from anywhere and you're not keen that they are denso or they are nissan genuine you know the word genuine gets thrown a lot around in nairobi so you should do your own due diligence and make sure that the plugs are uh, are of good quality and then they'll serve you probably 50k kilometers 60k probably a good nissan plug it's probably all the way from 3,000 to 4,000 bob a plug. The reason why they are so expensive is because, again, the special metals these guys use, you know, they have all these technical terms for this and technical names for these metals. They have titanium, platinum, uh, you know, these electrodes, all that stuff, iridium. All that stuff is, uh, you not find those metals, iridiums, your iridiums and your platinums in, you know, in, 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 in spark plugs that were installed in cars of the yester years, but, Modern cars, again, they're looking for better fuel efficiency and, you know, they're looking for a point of exactitude with how the plug fires, with how the engine fires. So they're going to manufacture, they're going to do more. They're going to manufacture plugs with all that stuff, you know, iridiums, your platinums, double tips. So that's why Nissan plugs are a bit costly. So for this one, you'll get, uh, you'll buy your plugs. This one is a three-cylinder. So anytime you're doing a plug change, you're expecting to have an added budget of around easily twelve to 14000 for a set of plugs. Something else you should look out for with this car uh, is the suspension. It's very interesting because, you know, you pop into a garage, you know, a random normal day service, maybe you had gone for, for a routine service, and then because your mechanic will not have read, your mechanic will not have read the, you know, the TSBs and, what, and whatnot. They'll probably tell you the bushes are out. Bushes in Asia, like this one. This one has one of bushes. Uh, it is, I'd call it a disaster. Do not dare replace the bushes in this car. Like what usually happens with, uh, you know, normally is you take out the whole arm, which is this, and then you replace what is uh, damaged. For example, you replace this bush, the other one, and probably your ball joint is kaput, you do it. But with this car, uh, the people who have been working on the notes, the new notes, have quickly realized that you don't do that with this. There's something about the bushes that is not so, that doesn't go so well with replacing the bushes. In fact, if you if you replace the bushes alone, you will end up, you know, spending on new tires because uh, once the new, it, it chews up bushes very fast, especially aftermarket bushes. So you will end up buying tires because you know alignment will be off and things like that so when you have one out bushes and then alignment is a bit you know the camber of the tire is affected uh you will wear out one side of your tires one side of whether the mostly the inside part with these cars and then you'll you'll end up buying new tires because you replace the bushes something so innocent and uh, done widely but with this car uh it would be it's probably 
in the Bible somewhere that you you should not replace the bushes in this car. So what you do, you once the bushes wear out, you buy the whole arm. You buy the whole arm and install it. It will come, you know, the whole arm will come with new everything, new pieces of metal, new rubber. So you buy the whole arm, take this one out completely, and install a new arm. You do, you'd find good brands such as 35. And if you do have the money to spend, you can buy Nissan Genuine uh, arms, which are probably in the range of, I don't know, I don't know, 14,000, 13,000, 12,000 in Nairobi, something like that. So with this car, do not dare do the bushes. And then, going to the rear axle. The rear axle is another interesting place in this car. This car, I think, it has done probably just about 90,000 kilometers so far in Kenya. And let me tell you, I'm going to tell you straight away that you are going to need or to have to replace the rear wheel bearings on this car both sides that one is uh it's almost in the bible somewhere uh this one i i replaced the driver's side of the rear wheel bearing at around uh, i did so last year and then the the passenger side on the rear side i replaced the rear wheel bearing probably three months ago they fail they'll you know they'll fail at probably past 100 000 kilometers you know entropy and things like that so the manufacturer the way those things are set up or the way those things are manufactured, uh, the rear wheel bearings will fail and you'll have to replace you'll have to replace those buggers at probably if your car is upwards of a hundred thousand K, you will have to replace, you will not escape replacing them. And again, uh with this car I tried replacing them with uh, you know some good quote unquote some good Japanese brands, but it didn't work out. Uh, it seems to like only Nissan. I had to import or I had to ship in uh, a couple of rear wheel bearings for this car so that it guarantees me that probably will be good for another 100k or probably 60 to 100k so we'll be fine with that. One more thing. The E12 Note comes with both front wheel drive options and four wheel drive options. For the four wheel drive, the rear diff is electric. And the power generator that supplies power to the electric diff is a big giant form of an alternator. That generator suffers a lot in regards to the bearing that uh, supports the pulley that is, that is driven by the belt. So you should expect, once you have a four-wheel drive option for the Nissan Note, you should expect to replace the power generator uh, of the rear diff sooner than later. So, after all that talk about expensive plugs, changing the whole arms, almost guaranteed failed rear wheel bush, uh, rear wheel bearings. And the interesting thing, the interesting thing is I've also changed the rear dead beam. It, it broke after a trip uh, to the village somewhere. So after all that talk, is the not a good car? That's Kenyan's favorite question. You know, they meet you and they're like, is this a good car? Is this a good car? Here's the verdict. I think the not is a good car. And for you Toyota diehards, I think it's more comfortable than the same class Toyotas, small Vitzes, Nini. It's more comfortable. Uh, the low end torque is a good thing because 1200 cc with a supercharger is very nice compared to a naturally aspirated Toyota with a 1300 cc. So the low end torque, you'll feel it and it will pull better. But here's the thing we this is a small town car, somewhere in Japan. They manufacture this for mall runs, you know where you are using tarmac everywhere. But we bring it here when it has already covered 100, 100k, 100,000 kilometers. And we want to cover a million kilometers with it while making it do difficult stuff like taking cows to the veterinary officer. So the problem is not with the car. It's how we perceive it. For those who have a problem with the buying parts, maintaining your vehicles you'll find those are the people who probably say nissan this nissan that but it's a good buy that's why there are so many being used in ubers private use this one is a private use car uh, and it has done very well for the users that it has been uh, mandated or given so that's it, service, belt, and a couple of things to do with the note. Uh, 
for from me and the stranded area which is two minutes from the home and my high-tech microphone over here i'll see you next time probably another car different issues etc etc have a good time bye